In this video, I'll be showing you how to implement sprinting, so if that is of interest to you, consider subscribing and stick around. For this tutorial, the project type does not matter. It can be first person or third person, so whichever one you decide you're working in will work just fine. So the first thing we gotta do is edit the project settings. So go to edit, project settings, and then scroll down here to you see input, and we gotta add an action mapping. And what this will do is it will allow us to use inputs from the keyboard inside of our blueprints. So click this little plus to add a new one and name it Sprint and hit enter to name it. And now right here, you select whatever key you want your Sprint key to be. In this case, I'm going to make it left shift and you can add multiple by clicking this plus. You can have as many as you want but we will only be using one in this tutorial. Next, go back to your main project and navigate to your character, wherever it may be located. For me, it's third person BP, blueprints, third person character. Open it up and we will be making two functions in this character to work with the input action we just created. So the two functions we'll be creating will be start sprinting and stop sprinting just like so we will also need to make two variables as well and these will both be floats the first one will be named walk speed and then the second one will be named sprint speed and then make sure you set them to float on both of these just like so and then compile and save so that your values show up. And for the walk speed, this value is going to be 600. It's just the default project walk speed that the default character walks at. And then our sprint speed will be 850. This value, or both of these values can be whatever you want them to be. It's just, I find 850 to be a decent value, and 600 is just the average, or the standard walk speed. Alright, make sure you've compiled and saved so that these values are all saved. And we will be starting in the start sprinting function. And the only thing you gotta make sure is, is that your character you're using has a character movement component. So if you don't have one, adding one is highly recommended to follow this tutorial. Alright, so the first thing we gotta do is drag out our character movement and do set max walk speed, just like so. And then connect this up to start sprinting. And for this value, we are going to need our sprint speed because it's start sprinting. So get that and hook that in. And then go ahead and copy and paste these two. So highlight them. Control C and paste them into stop sprinting. And it's the same exact thing, except this time we want to grab our walk speed, hook that in, make sure that's connected, and then compile and save, and we can move on to the next step. All right, so for the next step, we need to go to our event graph. And this is where we are going to take advantage of the input action we made before. So right click and search for sprint and you should see a active action event right here if you've named it something else just search for whatever you named it and it should show up and on pressed we need to do start sprinting which calls our function from before and on release we need to do stop sprinting just like so so compile and save and we can test the results so when we hit play, we can see that we can walk around as normal. But if we press shift, we start to speed up just a little bit. It's very hard to notice somewhat sometimes. But if you increase the values to something drastic, you can see much better results. And also it lurps with the values. So it eases in and out of the sprint. So that is also a bonus as well. There is also bonus things we can do with these functions we've created so for instance in this project i don't have a shooting input action but if i did you could set 
this stop sprinting at the end of your shooting. So then whenever the player shoots and they're sprinting at the same time, it will make them stop sprinting, if that makes sense. So what we also can do is add another variable and call it sprinting and make sure it's a boolean, compile and save, and then start sprinting, set this to true, and then stop sprinting, set it to false. And with this value, we can check to see if the player is currently sprinting. So if we wanted to not be able to do things like jumping or something while the player is sprinting, we can simply just check if it's false by adding a branch. And then the player will not be able to jump while they're sprinting. All in all, though, that concludes this tutorial. If it was helpful, leave a like, leave a comment down below, and consider subscribing if you enjoyed. But other than that, that is it, and I will see you later. Bye.